Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Sestrash. I am a lecturer at the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca, Faculty of Civil Engineering, Department of Land Measurements and Cadaster. Given the current situation and troubling times that we are facing, I am glad to be able to participate to GEA conference online. Today, I will present to you a part of a larger project that I am working on, respectively a case study involving the use of UAV systems in cadastral surveying and technical documentations. The city of Cluj-Napoca is situated in the historical region of Transylvania in the northwest part of Romania. Over time, Cluj-Napoca has earned the title of capital of Transylvania because of the dynamism with which it has grown to become today the most important academic, medical, economic, cultural, sports and scientific center in Transylvania. The universities and research institutes are the key of the city's development. There are over 80,000 students attending the prestigious universities, such as the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca, University Babes Boyoy, uh, University of Medicine, University of uh, Medicinal Veterinary and uh, Agricultural Sciences, University of Art and Design music academy and other private universities. Cluj-Napoca is an attractive destination for investors because of its economic policies and the young, well-educated, competitive and qualified labor force. The business community in Cluj-Napoca is actively contributing to the city's growth and they are key partners of, of the municipality and implementing the local development strategies. Cluj-Napoca has a few economic advantages that make it stand out in Central Europe and in Romania, respective, respectively the powerful development of the IT industry. In this slide, um, some major players in the Cluj-Napoca market can be uh, observed. The city is also home to numerous music and film festivals, nightlife and culinary experiences. Luznapoca is internationally acknowledged as a safe, friendly and pleasant city. The fact that the city is one of the most important academic centers in the country the numerous future opportunities in the well-played work sectors, together with a desired place to live in because of the historic value, activities, and the overall dynamism of the city, makes Cluj-Napoca one of the largest expanding cities in Romania and East Europe. It is estimated that over 10,000 young people decide to remain in Cluj after finishing the university studies each year. In the continuous expanding and densely populated Cluj-Napoca metropolitan area, land is one of the most important resources and the key to sustainable development. The population in the metropolitan area is estimated to be over 600,000. Under the constant pressure of um, urban sprawl, the geomorphological aspect of the region was very important. The city, is surrounded by hills, the most important being Feliaku Hill in the south part and, um, and the Cluj Hills in the northern part. The city is crossed from west to east by Somes River and that region is characterized with plateaus of lower elevation that favor the expansion of the metropolitan area in the west and east part. The unprecedented urban sprawl phenomenon 
imposed the expansion of the city limits and the transformation of adjacent villages into chaotic suburbs. Such is the case of Florest village that is currently the largest village in Romania. Because of the high prices of apartments, houses and land in the city, many young people or low-income families choose to move in Florest. It is estimated that between uh, 60,000 and 80,000 people live in Florest and most of them work in the city, making the traffic in between very convoluted. In these images can be observed apartment blocks from Florest and the uh, unprepared transformation of a village to a suburb in terms of infrastructure, roads, transportation, utility, net utility networks, and others. With a general move towards urbanizations, uh, land becomes an increasingly difficult resource to obtain and the construction market is a desideratum. The prices of apartments, new or old, skyrocketed in the last decade, and the average price per square meter is the highest in Romania. And so in Cluj-Napoca, the average price is over 1,800 1, euros per square meter. Even with the current high rate of construction, things do not seem to stop or slow down and more investors and more spectacular projects are developed. These are some examples of um, luxurious residential buildings currently in development. The present case study is a di direct cause of the constant pressure of urban sprawl and addresses the need for fast and efficient land surveys in this area. The, the research conducts towards a guideline and model for an effective use of unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly known as drones, that accompanies the traditional and well-established GNSS and total station measurements needed in cadastral and technical documentation. The research terrain is situated in one of the most desired neighborhoods in Cluj-Napoca called Grigorescu. Grigorescu is a medium-sized neighborhood located between Somes River and the hills that surround the city. In the last year, more and more construction development were carried on these hills. There are a lot of logical and um, technical difficulties when uh, building on the steep hills and um, landslides are one of the natural hazards that has to be taken into consideration. Nevertheless, the, the beautiful panoramic views, peace and greenery, the closest to the main neighborhoods and the city center transformed this outside the build-up area terrains in, um, in desired and luxurious parcels of land. In this image, it can be observed the hill and the terrain subjected to investigation. So it will be this terrain on this hill. And uh, here it is from a different angle, respectively this strip of land. In these images are the land registry for the desired terrain. It is the topographer's job, also known as land surveyor, to conduct field measurements, operate in the technical part of uh, land registers, and to create outputs or deliverables for the architect and civil engineer in order for them to design the infrastructure and the building. The terrain in question needs to be subjected to numerous cadastral documentation, such as conversion from topographic number to cadastral number, area modification, merging between two parcels, 
elaboration of topographic plan for construction purpose and CAD uh, computed AD design measurements with 3D model contour lines and profiles for the construction planning. Here can be observed the differences between the old land records that had topographic numbers and were stored on old sketches and plans and the modern electronic cadastral database. The first measurement that was carried out was in September 2019 and because of the high vegetation it was literally an urban jungle inside that terrain. It was impossible to survey with traditional topogeodetic instruments, such as um, total stations or GNSS. Thus, uh, UAV survey was the solution chose with the desire to automate as much as possible the process of da data collection data processing and the transformation of deliverables for the architect and civil engineer in platforms that they use. UAVs are one of the fastest developing industries with vast potential and future implementations. It revolutionized many industries and the acquisition of valuable data from the field combined with photogrammetry techniques and software can achieve great results. The drone that we used was a DJI Mavic Pro, which is a, which is a semi-professional mid-level cost UAV system. By combining photogrammetry techniques, field, measure, field measured ground control points and the structure from motion software Agisoft, we obtained a high resolution orthophoto plan that can help us extract valuable data. In this slide can be observed the orthophoto plan together with the situation from cadaster of the neighboring parcel, thus obtaining our desired contour, our study area. Respectively, the blue polygon together with the yellow polygon that both uh, land belongs to the same um, uh, person. Together with the purple uh, segment that represents the road that serves as access between the main road and the terrain. Using the derived digital elevation model from the aerial survey, respectively by um, exporting and importing the uh, TIF image from Agisoft to Esteri ArcGIS, further spatial analysis can be carried out, such as the one presented in the figures that uh, represents the elevation, the slope, and the aspect that are currently not very conclusive because of high vegetation. So, because of the high vegetation captured from the aerial images and the difficulty of cleaning such a large portion from the point cloud, we decided to remake the survey between winter and spring when there will be no vegetation present. Thus, a second field measurement was in, was a second field measurement and investigation was conducted in March of this year in a sunny day with good weather. It can, um, it can be seen that the vegetation was uh, minimum, only three branches that are easily to remove, and the grass was bent over after the snow melted, thus ensuring a good representation of the terrain. By following the same principles, we obtained a second orthophoto plan and digital elevation model with differences in with the differences in vegetation clearly visible between the two dates. So here is the orthophoto plan from 2020, this March, 
and it can easily be seen less vegetation than uh, the one from September 2019. In this slide, we have the orthophoto with the study area and the digital elevation model. Uh, the red polygon represents our study area and the uh, future figures will be cropped after this study area in order to focus on the investigated terrain and to, and to minimize the processing power needed. It was important for us to obtain a digital terrain model from the obtained digital surface model. Digital surface model captures the entire the entirety of the surface with vegetation and construction included. Digital terrain model is a representation of only the natural terrain. The process of obtaining um, digital terrain models differs depending on the used software and can be a tedious manual process of cleaning the point cloud or an automated detection of vegetation and obstacles with removal or a combination of the two, as, as was our case using Agisoft software. In this figure, we present the slope in degrees in the right uh, part from the cleaned digital terrain model and on the left uh, from the digital surface model. It can be observed that the digital terrain model um, slope is much smoother and, uh, and more concluding for the terrain. This figure can help the geotechnical engineer to evaluate the earthworks and anthropic intervention needed to stabilize or construct the road and buildings. In this figure, we present the aspect of the terrain. And again, the DTM figure from the left is much more useful in understanding the layout. This spatial analysis shows the orientation of the terrain with a dominant preponderance of the south of the southeast, which leads to a reception of higher quantities of life, of light, and implicitly of heat. This information is very useful when designing a building. In this figure, we present the solar radiation represented in kilowatt hours per square meter per day. The heat, the heat gain is also useful to architects for designing windows and openings for the future uh, buildings. Following the spatial analysis, we wanted to extract elevations from the digital terrain model and incorporate them in a, uh, in a CAD platform used by architects and civil engineers, such as Archicad, AutoCAD, or Revit architecture. Thus, we created a fishnet with a cell size of two by two meters, and we extracted the central value that is the elevation from that point. Here, uh, it can be seen the attribute table and the extracted information, respectively the uh, elevation. And uh, then came the import in AutoCAD of the points of node coordinates and extracted elevations from the GIS digital terrain model. We obtained a total of 1,520 points for our studied area, which is a number that would have taken two or three days of traditional 
field measurements. One of the outputs or deliverables that a topographer gives to the civil engineer is the 3D model of the terrain in a shared platform. This was obtained based on the UAV extracted points and uh, it was done in AutoCAD using Topo LT uh, modules. So this 3D model and future deliverables can easily be shared between the topographer and civil engineer because the um, uh, deliverable in GIS or from uh, Agisoft from photogram photogrammetry would normally uh, not be compatible with the architect and civil engineer software. It also can be seen the difference between the digital surface model, which is this one from the left, and the digital terrain model with cleaned vegetation and obstacles. Another very important deliverable are the contour lines of the terrain used by the civil engineer to design the building and the ground floor elevation. And here are the studied area with each point of known coordinates and known elevations and the contour lines uh, generated based on these uh, extracted points from the drone. Also, the transversal or longitudinal profiles can further help the engineer to understand the configuration of the terrain and to elaborate the project. In this generated longitudinal profile, we can observe uh, the, flat, the flat character of the land in the first part, continued with slopes and natural terraces, and the very steep last part with a slope of 66 degrees. In conclusion, uh, the present study aimed to present a modern approach of combining both field and aerial survey in order to complete a cadastral documentation of a difficult to measure terrain in a developing area of the city of Cluj-Napoca. This established workflow is fully integrable into similar situations and presents the advantages and possibilities of future UAV implementations. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I would like to congratulate the organizers for uh, the work um, and um, uh, the prestigious um, status of this conference with special thanks to Professor Velibor Spalevich, and with the hopes of seeing each other next year in Podgorica, Montenegro. Thank you again and goodbye.